In this video, you're going to learn how to work through a bearing word problem involving uh, directions and finding the uh, lengths and the angles and using the law of sines and the law of cosines. I know these problems can sometimes be difficult for students because there's a lot involved, but let's work through a typical example together and you'll see how this works. So we've got a ship that's traveling 200 miles at a bearing of 50 degrees from city A to city B. It then travels 150 miles at a bearing of north 60 degrees west to city C. Find the distance and the bearing from city C back to city A. So there's a lot going on here you can, you can see. The first thing I would do is I would draw like a northeast, southwest um, kind of directional system over here. And what I would do is I'd start at city A, which is right here at the origin, and the ship is traveling 200 miles at a bearing of 50 degrees. Now we're used to going along the positive x-axis and measuring our angle counterclockwise from that positive x-axis if it's a positive angle. But with bearing, you start at the north and you rotate clockwise. Okay, so it's a little bit different. So you find that north star, okay, or, or north, and you rotate 50 degrees clockwise. So 50 degrees clockwise would be right about uh, here roughly, okay, and I'll just draw an arrow showing that that's 50 degrees. Okay, and that's traveling 200 miles. Okay, so then, here, let's make it a little bit further, okay, then it travels 150 miles at a bearing of north 60 degrees west. So what I would do is I would draw another like northeast southwest coordinate axis system right here. This is a uh, city B and let's label that northeast, southwest. But this is another way of basically describing the direction. Instead of just going clockwise from the north, what you do is either start facing north or south, that's what this first letter would represent, and then you rotate towards the west or the east from that first direction. So in this case, I'm facing north, I'm rotating 60 degrees towards the west, that's gonna be something like this. Okay, and that's traveling 150 miles. Okay, then let's draw another, this is city C. We're gonna draw another northeast, southwest. And we're gonna go from city C back to city A. Okay, so that's very interesting. So we need to find what's the distance and what's the bearing from city C to city A. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, when you draw your drawing, try to draw it very large. Mine is not super large here, but <clears throat> try to draw it large and then also try to keep everything that's horizontal, horizontal, everything that's vertical, vertical, because what you'll notice is, is how to find these angles. And you're probably having flashbacks from geometry here. See, if this is 50 degrees, this angle here would be 40 degrees because that's a 90 degree angle. And if this is 40, this angle here is 40 degrees because these guys are alternate interior angles. See the parallel lines cut by the transversal? If this is 60, this angle here has to be 30 because, again, this forms a right angle here. <clears throat> and let's see, if this is 30, this would be 30 right here. Again, those are alternate interior angles. And so that's what you can do. You can work through the diagram finding these missing angles. But let's say we wanna find this length now from city C back to city A. Well, look at what we have. We've got this side 150, we've got this side 200, and we have this angle in between 30 plus 40, which is 70 degrees. So when you have side, angle, side, that's when you're gonna to wanna to use the law of cosines. So in this case, the A and the B, those are the two sides that make up this 70 degree angle. So, and then this is gonna be our side C, the distance from city C to city A. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna call this distance x. So we're gonna say x squared is equal to 150 squared plus 200 squared minus two times 150 times 200 times the cosine of the angle in between, which is 70 degrees. Now we don't want x squared, we just want x. So let's take the square root of both sides, and let's go to the calculator and see what we get for that. So this is gonna be square root of 150 squared plus 200 squared minus two times 150 times 200 times the cosine of 
70 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. So I'm getting about, I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth, we'll just say it's about approximately 204.9 uh, miles. Okay, so that is going to be this distance right here. Let's label that 204.9 miles. Now we want to find the the angle, okay, or the direction from city C to city A. So what we could do here is a couple different things. We could look at this angle right here, and we're going to use the law of sines now. So that's this one here, the sine of an angle over its side opposite equals to the sine of another angle over its side opposite in a given triangle. So let's just say we call this whole angle here Y. So I'm going to say the sine of angle Y uh, over the side opposite, which is 200, equals the sine of 70 degrees over its side opposite, which is the 204.9 miles. I'll multiply both sides by 200. Okay, and then to find y, I'm going to have to take the sine inverse of this whole quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what we get. 200 sine of 70 divided by 204.9 and take the sine inverse. I'm getting 66, whoops, 66 point uh, five degrees. So that's this whole angle right here, 66.5. Now, notice that this is a right angle, so if that's 30, this must be 60, which means that this little angle right here is 6.5 degrees. Okay, now that's interesting because when we find the bearing, we're measuring from north clockwise. So I'm going 180 plus 6.5 degrees more. So the bearing is 186.5 degrees. That's one way to state the bearing. The other way to state the bearing is to use this either facing north or south. In this case, we're closer to the south, so I could say south, and then we're heading 6.5 degrees towards the west. And so this is our direction, uh, this is our distance, 204.9 miles. This is our bearing. You can state it two different ways. So great job if you're able to follow this bearing word problem. If you want more practice or you want to try one on your own or you just want to see another example, I'll put one that I did previously right there. Follow me over to that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.